Greetings out there, all the filmtastic fans of the Wild Rivers Film Festival. I am Amanda Whittemore, and we are here with the Wild Rivers Film Radio, the official podcast of the Wild Rivers Film Festival on KCIW 100.7. We have Bev with us in the station. Good evening. Good evening. We're super excited. She'll be uh, interacting with us throughout the show as we have a special guest. However, first... We are wanting to thank our sponsors. We do this all the time because that's how much we appreciate all the support just as much as we do all the listeners. We'd like to thank the Wild Rivers Film Festival presenting sponsor for 2024, KDRV Newswatch 12 out of Medford, Oregon. Thank you, Newswatch, for Newswatch 12 for making the film festival possible this year. This year's Wild River Film Festival is also brought to you in part by the Talawadi, Oregon Community Foundation, the Ford Family Foundation, Travel Curry Coast, the Roundhouse Foundation, and the City of Brookings. Interested in sponsoring the Wild Rivers Film Festival and our mission to celebrate indie films, independent films, on the Wild Rivers Coast? You can learn more on the website wildriversfilmfestival.com. We encourage volunteers, physical human beings, hands-on, Even if you only have one hour, sometimes it takes literally five minutes to make the world of a film festival. And we appreciate all of our volunteers. The topic of today is quite unique and special. And we have a lovely guest here, Mr. Tim Oakley, who's going to tell us all about it. Hello. Hi. (laughs) Welcome, Tim. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much for being here, Tim. We're looking forward to our talk. You know, usually the director, as you are does the action, right? And you, you're, this, you're the writer, you're the director. Tell us about you. Oh, I love movies mm-hmm. and I love making movies. Okay. And I've been doing it for my entire adult life. <laughs> <laughs> adult well, being been, like 10 or 15 or 21? Uh, well, I've just been making my own movies forever. But okay. Usually just with friends. And, you know, just getting my friends involved. and Right. And it's usually, uh, I don't have a plan. Yeah. I'm just like, let's make a movie. That's all I want to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I just wrangle up. I don't think I, I think all of my friends at some point end up in a movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're right. So just, this brings up the fact of, um, I don't even, just, just going to go there real quick, shooting clerks. Oh, have you? Their t- T-shirt says it's all about making movies with your friends. Oh, nice! <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's where I'm feeling yeah. from you. Well, <laughs> so all your friends end up in movies because you put them there, or they just end up there. No, that's that's where I put them. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Whether they like it or not. Uh huh. Uh huh. But it's <laughs> mostly consensual. Oh uh, yeah, it's mostly consensual. <laughs> <laughs> and the film industry is kind of a big deal these days. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so what gets you most of your inspiration? Um, that's a good question. My inspiration comes from movies that I really like and filmmakers that I that I admire. My I my inspiration comes from the way that I feel when I watch a movie. So the way and I want to be able to make people feel like that. I guess that's what that's what it is. What is my inspiration? Yeah. Yeah. I want to make people feel the way that I feel when I watch a good movie. Mm, that's quite a talent. And um, yeah, so that's what I think when I, what is the, I think make, making a movie is all about making people feel a sort of way. <laughs> well, how do I want people to feel? Um, and it could be anything. And then how am I going to accomplish that? Well, what would make me feel like, like that? Mm-hmm. That's how I'm going to do that. So do you look forward to kind of challenging uh, our belief system to make us feel something? Or uh, is it action? What drives that? Oh, well, right now, uh, right now, my goal for the film I'm working on now is really just to uh, elicit a visceral fear response in the audience uh you know because that's always fun (laughs) (laughs) always so uh just for our audience what is that film what's uh so the movie is elsewhere is Mm -hmm. the name of it 
And it's a short horror film, uh, and it's going to be real scary. <laughs> that's oh. that's the goal, at least. <laughs> well, you know, when you have a, a goal and then you achieve it, it feels pretty good, mm-hmm. no matter what it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that sounds really honestly scary. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> you have a good delivery. Would our guest recognize anything that you've worked on previously? Oh, I don't know. Where would they find it? Um, you can go to timoakley.com and okay. I've got some work on there. I don't have yeah, this one. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you can, get on that station and listen find Tim Oakley, <laughs> just as Bev is. I did. Yeah, I looked so, up Tim Oakley yeah, and a couple of your shorts some, just some popped my, up. Yeah, <laughs> some of my movies are on there. Um, I did. I just make little short films for the most part i mean it would be wonderful to eventually make uh, a feature feature film yeah Yeah, but uh that's something that that's pretty ambitious (laughs) (laughs) mighty ambitious yeah have you entered your short films at the um on film freeway with wild rivers film festival um mm, well i actually did enter one uh but um it would be for i actually entered one for the for next year. 2025? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, okay. 2025. Okay. I did that very recently. Oh, rad. At, uh, Thank you. That's exciting. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, so, exciting. Mm-hmm. I think the short films are becoming more and more popular. I love, I love the short film format because in a way it's, in a way it's more challenging story-wise than a feature film because it's, it's not more challenging to produce a short film because... It's less work because it's a short film. Uh, but story-wise, <clears throat> it actually is more difficult to tell a complete story in, you know, five mm-hmm. to ten minutes than exactly. to tell a complete story in an hour an hour or yeah. two. Um, because short film, even though it's a short film, you still have to, it still has to have structure. Exactly. And, and I would imagine that those... Uh, moments, those pauses or the little epiphanies that you're trying to communicate across have to be powerful. And yes. Quick. Yes. And um, there can't be any, there can't be a single wasted frame basically in the, in the film. It has to be, every single frame has to be meaningful and it has to help tell the story that you want to tell. Those are the things that really yeah. excite you about doing the short film. Yeah, and the short film, film, what what I'm really excited about, this, the short film elsewhere that we're working on now is, um, it is it's, gonna, it's a little bit bigger than anything I've ever done because um, I actually, I'm involving people that, I, I like got the local theater, you know, people involved. The Czech Pelican employer people? Yeah, the uh, or Three uh, Penny? Uh, three Penny. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, Huge yeah. sponsors. Thank you, Three Pennies, for sponsoring Film Festival. <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 uh, I mean, very grateful, very grateful to uh, Jason and Kat for their help on this project, uh, helping uh, basically get auditions together and get a cast. And this is be the first time I've actually had, t- like, actually gone out and looked for talent outside of my own little circle Mm -hmm. (laughs) so that's that's exciting um yeah so that'll be fun that'll be fun uh experience so when you do these shorts like elsewhere are you a one-man show do you do it all you're the director the editor add the music the whole bit yeah pretty much uh i do have i i usually just recruit like if i need a, a crew members of any kind as when a as far as all the creative stuff goes, it's usually just me. Uh, I do the cinematography. I do um, all the sound design and editing, and I am the director as well. Most of the time, it's my story and my script. Or Actually, most of the time, I don't have a script. <laughs> okay. But I did this time. I wrote a script this time. In fact, I wrote it and then rewrote it and then rewrote it about six times. <laughs> <laughs> So, but I think it's in its final form now, hopefully. Um, but yeah, it's usually me. I do have, uh, I'm very lucky that I have a very uh, s- talented 
son who is a musician and a great songwriter as well. And I usually uh, will just make him do the music. <laughs> uh, but we work together. We work together on that too. But um, music, very important, very big part of telling a story. Absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah. So how much time do you think you put in behind the scenes to make that five-minute short a reality? So filming takes, you know, just a matter of hours, really. Uh, Post-production can take months. Um, years? <laughs> years, yeah. This this yeah. project, I'm probably going to be spending a good chunk of time. I, I, I imagine that I'll probably be be working on it for several months. Solid. Yeah. Yeah. After after filming. Like shooting is gonna be two days. Right, right. You know, shooting it. <laughs> yeah. Getting and, it recorded. And then uh it's all post. And so how do you discipline yourself to stay laser focused on that for so long? And I imagine someone as creative as you, you have a million other ideas popping into your head while you're doing that. And other projects too. You know? Exactly. <laughs> and and but uh but it's it's if it's something I'm passionate about, if it's something I care about, uh then it's not it's not hard to just laser in on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there is a point where if I am working on something too too long, I start to I like have to walk away for a while. That's one thing. That's one reason why it takes longer because you can't just constantly work on it because then you lose sight. It's got to breathe. Yeah, you lose sight of. Uh, well, you just you you see it so many times that you forget what what makes it special, and mm -hmm. then so you have to walk away and then come back in a few days or whenever, and then with fresh eyes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If this is your first time and you're hearing about Wild Rivers Film Festival, we're glad that you're joining us. Wild Rivers Film Festival is a celebration of indie, independent, and local cinema that happens during the third week of every August in Brookings. Over the course of four days, we screen more than four dozen films at three locations across the city. Many of our film screenings feature Q&A sessions from visiting filmmakers, and our festival includes daily educational panels, VIP parties, and not-to-be-missed award ceremony on the final day of the fest. Festival passes are on sale now at wildriversfilmfestival.com. We can't wait to see you at the show. And we're super glad to have Bev, one of the executive board members in here. And we got Tom in the editing room with Sue. We are super glad that this team really knows how to make things happen behind the scenes and all the parts that are moving to keep it going. And so thank you, Tim, for being here and telling us all the parts of making your film. And how many films have you made? Uh, well, if we count every film <laughs> yeah uh even the ones that probably don't exist anymore like there are some there's some that have just been lost to the ether uh yeah. but i i uh yeah it's at least 20 i mean oh wow holy um, goodness there's only a few on my website because i i have to be selective because i i, I i've made a lot of movies and they're not all good mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a practice yeah exactly <laughs> got experience even though it's funny because, like, I'll look back at some of the movies I made when I was in high school, which was 20 years ago, and and then I'll, and then I'm like, these are actually pretty good. I kind of am jealous of how good I was back then, but it's because I didn't care. <laughs> raw, and it was raw. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now you have all these ideas of what it's supposed to now be. Now it's like, yeah, and you know, that can be paralyzing trying to make something good uh like i it, it i haven't done i haven't done a project in a really long time and i think it's just because i've kept this have this idea in my head where i'm like i want to make a really good movie mm -hmm. and and i think that that's a mistake <laughs> because it shouldn't be like it shouldn't be like i want to make a really good movie it should just be like i want to make a movie let's just make a movie i don't even care if it's good good bad that's subjective that's not even up to me really um but if i'm doing something it's going to turn out 
you know, as long as I complete something, that's all I care about. Right. And would you, how would you, that kind of feels like ways that you would be able to advise or give, um, like, inspiration to somebody who's, like, struggling through, do they do it, do they not do it? How would you burst them through to make that 20th or 50th movie? Oh, my biggest piece of advice would be just that. Don't, perfectionism is the enemy of creativity. Mm -hmm. Just make something. Don't make, don't even set out to make something perfect or good even. Just do it. Yes. (laughs) Feels really good. Yeah. Just, you know, if there's something you want to do, if it's, well, especially if, with filmmaking, it's sometimes, and then I, I read a book and I can't remember, I think it was like uh, the guy who made Toxic Avenger. <laughs> I can't remember his name, Kaufman or something. Anyway, uh-huh. uh, he, he made like a hundred movies before making that and they were all, they're all terrible. <laughs> but he, his advice was, Start by just doing quantity over quality. That's oh. just do just start that way because it's all learning. Mm-hmm. If you're mm-hmm. if you're the best way to learn how to do something, like I didn't go to film school and I would have loved to uh, got have gone to film school and um, it's still uh, on the table. But um, mm-hmm. it's like so many people go to film school, but they don't end up making movies. Mm-hmm. But the best way to learn how to make a movie is just to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With most things. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and you can, if you have, well, nowadays you can make a movie on your phone. When I started making movies, that wasn't an option um, because cell phones weren't even a thing. <laughs> I was editing on a two a, a VCR stacked on top of another VCR. <laughs> They were plugged into each other, and I would hit play, record, stop. On. Right. That's how I edited my. Did movies. you have a MIDI board? With my, I didn't have a MIDI board. <laughs> no, that would have been actually an improvement. <laughs> right. <laughs> but anyway, that's how I started, just with whatever I had lying around. Oh, um, yeah. But I'm, I'm uh, self-taught. Guess, yeah, mm-hmm. and I'm lucky to have people who tolerate. Who encourage you, I would imagine, too. You know, sort of, you have, because you're creative, you have to get filled back up with ideas and inspirations. Yeah. Yeah. I do have people who I can bounce ideas off of, and that's great. Yeah. Well, we are a new film festival. We've only, you know, we did the year 2023, and we're here on 2024. We have this workshop, our first time ever workshop that we're having executive director Daniel Spring in do with us at SWAC. And we, as the uh, listeners and the people of the film, the film fans, part of our mission is to get people excited about the film culture in our community, which we're all doing, and we're super grateful for your time. If you don't mind sharing what it is about filmmaking and cinema that you're most passionate, filmmaking, some cinema, same difference. Mm-hmm. What are you mm-hmm. most passionate about and why? Um... I'm most passionate about storytelling, probably, mm. above all, because we, as humans, are storytellers, all of us, deep down. And that's what makes us human, is we tell stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess that that's, I would say that's what... Um, that's what, that is a uniquely human thing. We're the only animal that tells stories. <laughs> Verbally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, we have fiction. Uh, that's basically <laughs> how we operate as people. You know, we tell stories and we communicate that to each other and we get large groups of people to tell the same story and that's how we have always been. <laughs> <laughs> Culturally. Yeah. So, exactly. <laughs> and so I just think that that is just a deep, deep down, deep seated instinct just to tell stories. It's a need. So, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. It's a need. It's a need. And, and so I guess first and foremost, tell a good story uh, or tell a story. We're, we're so lucky that, to have a way to tell stories that we can show people 
this story. We can show totally. them visually and audibly. And so it's it's just such a, I don't know, we're just really lucky to have that, that ability. And it's art and... Um, Expression. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think and it's it, you sharing your gift. Hey everyone, this is Kat Liddell, one of the co-hosts of the Wild Rivers Film Radio Podcast. I couldn't be in the station in person this week, but I did get to sit down and have an interview off-site with one of the casting directors of Elsewhere. So in a minute here, you're going to be hearing an interview with Jason Liddell, one of the casting directors for that film. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Wild Rivers Film Radio, the official podcast for the Wild Rivers Film Festival, the newest film festival here in Brookings, Oregon. But I had the opportunity to sit down for a special interview with uh, another person involved with the making of Elsewhere, a film by Tim Oakley. So I'm here in the makeshift studio with Jason Liddell, who served as casting director for that film. Jason Liddell, welcome to Wild Rivers Film Radio. Hi, Kat. Lovely to be here. I love working with the Wild Rivers Film Festival. So you uh, have been a volunteer with the Wild Rivers Film Festival. This is your second year now. It's our second year of operation. Been around since the beginning. Uh, but you came here by way of being involved in the performing arts by way of theater. That's Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I was about 20 years old is when I discovered community theater and I never looked back. You've been involved in community theater for, for a little over a decade now and... Um, you just uh, helped found another theater company here in town, Three Penny Theater. Yes, uh, April of 2023, uh, you and I together, uh, we founded the Three Penny Theater Co. And it began as a, a kind of a passion project. Uh, we had great reception from our audiences and we were growing big and we were growing fast. And then we went into a nonprofit. And so now uh, I'm just a volunteer for the company. Yeah, and uh, obviously one of the most active volunteers. Uh, but one of the exciting things about starting this this new company is that we've been experimenting with uh, with new ways of engaging in the performing arts. And it was because of this experimentation that you crossed paths with Tim Oakley and you ended up being casting director for the film that's currently in production uh, elsewhere. Yeah, that is a, that's actually a pretty funny story. Uh, I had met Tim, I think, six years ago. We happened to be at the same wedding together. Uh, we met, he talked about film, I wanted to be an actor, we were going to try to meet up, and then six years later, he messages me about this film, and I go, yes, let's trade numbers, and we both realized that I think I had sent my name to him six years ago, and that text thread still existed, and it just never got followed up on, so this felt like a project that was literally six years in the making. And so he tapped into you to um, help cast this production. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about what that experience has been like? Yeah, um, I think I think Tim reached out just knowing that um, I, along with many others, uh, work with a lot of actors being in community theater. And he asked me if I could help find some people. And I reached out to the people that I knew, some awesome actors here in Brookings, some incredible actors up in Gold Beach, um, organized a, a small audition, and we all met. Everyone read really, really well. Everyone that read is in the movie in some capacity. Well, you have a so you have a lot of buy-in from community members as a, a part of this cast. And um, I was wondering because uh, there it's a small community and there's a lot of familiar faces. Like people just recognize each other around town. Um, who are some faces that people might recognize if they uh, if they go to see this film when, once it's wrapped and it's uh, in post, out of post production and screening? So I think you'll recognize most faces, if not all. Um, our lead character, Heather, is going to be played by Teal Mace, who is um, a wonderful performer, uh, done a lot of bartending in town. A lot of people know her face. Mm. Um, and she also is uh, well-known in town for, for her, um, her work in music. She's a singer as, as well. So she, people may recognize her, if not from the bar scene, from the music scene. Right? And she's part of the band Fleetwood's Back, which I believe is with Tim. So they cross paths a lot in their, their mm -hmm. art engagement. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people might recognize Gigi Hodges. She's an actress and director up in Gold Beach, and she's going to be playing our uh, our waitress or our waiter. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you that know Mike Vest, Mike Vest is a good friend of ours. He's going to be, going to be playing a patron. Is Mike the uh, patron who's warning? Yeah, I believe so. Tim yeah. Tim has changed the script up a little bit, as is want to happen over the creative process. 
Mm-hmm. But Mike's going to be one of the patrons that kind of warns our protagonist about the the underpinnings and creepiness of the town. Mm-hmm. The scary, the scary stuff that's <laughs> going on, if you will. And uh, beyond uh, casting locally, this film is getting also uh, shot locally as well. Um, talk about securing a location for for filming that's going to be coming up um, actually at the at the end of June. I am so excited. At the time of recording, I just helped secure that we're going to be able to film in the Indian Creek Cafe in Gold Beach. Part of the script involves our protagonist walking into the diner, and an exchange happens, and the owner of Indian Creek was more than happy to say, yes, please come in, please film here. That sounds amazing, and I am incredibly stoked to be able to, to have that happen, to work with a local business, help give them some spotlight, and go, hey, movie was shot here. Yeah. Come, have, come have brunch. Yeah, <laughs> come have brunch. <laughs> uh, thriller we're shot here. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the uh, you know it is it is important to to think about when you're when you're doing location screening and location scouting and trying to find spots for these films. Like it's it's crucial for local businesses to get on board with it. Like you know, um, and we we don't necessarily have sound studios, you know, in spades in in Brookings. So like it it definitely is is a huge boon when local businesses are are willing and able to to help out and to to be accommodating and lend their space in that way and like be all in on on the creation of art and just being able to provide resources in that way and if they're equipped it's a really easy way to get your business out there mm-hmm. you know there's very little usually very little uh contribution on their part just you know let us use your space absolutely uh well what is the thing as as filming for this is approaching what is something that you're most excited about as far as being on on a film set for um is is this your first time on a film set yeah so i've never been on a film set and i'm really excited to see all of the background stuff the filming the lighting the staging um and our director tim Oakley is going to do all of that stuff he is our cinematographer our director our writer and doing everything in post-production all the editing so I'm really excited to see how a scene takes place from a camera's perspective, because what I'm used to is the stage perspective. Mm-hmm. And film is vastly different. Mm-hmm. And so I'm excited to see what the differences there are. Obviously, you've you've been getting a lot of new experiences by way of, of being involved with filmmakers, being involved with the festival. Um, what do you think? What do you think is one of the, the most interesting or like, you know, like profound things that you learned like about? just film or the performing arts in general by by opening up and expanding a little bit more beyond the stage and and being a part of this uh being a part of this industry and this festival this might be kind of ironic but it's the collaborative nature of it and by that i mean i've always known as collaborative but the people that i've met have been so willing to help so willing to be a part of so willing to contribute to that there's definitely a a connection between artists that I've met across all performing mediums. All right. Well, Jason Liddell, um, prime volunteer for Three Penny Theater Co., <laughs> casting director for the upcoming film Elsewhere, and a volunteer for the film festival. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for having me. All right. That is it for this episode of Wild Rivers Film Radio. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. And we also want to give our special thanks to Tim Oakley, the director of Elsewhere, for joining us to talk more about his film, which is just going to start shooting on June 25th. Um, Once it's out of post-production, we'll be letting you know where you can see it. I'd like to give special thanks to our co-hosts, Amanda and Bev, as well as our producer, Tom. Uh, Sound editing and sound mixing was done by me, Kat Liddell. Uh, Recording engineer was also Tom Bozak. Thank you so much again to our presenting sponsor, KDRV Newswatch 12 out of Medford for making the Wild Rivers Film Festival possible. That is it. We've got no more and we will see you next time.